What's up guys? I'm Sean Battle and this is Battle on Real Estate where I take my 16 plus years of real estate knowledge and share it with you. You ready? So let's get into it. Today's episode is a little bit different. We are going to be talking to Brian Patty of All Pro Services. He is a radon specialist. Uh, and today's topic is all about radon. The reason we're doing this is because I am selling my personal house and we had a radon test done here. And to my surprise, it was actually above the EPA standard and I had to get an abatement system into my house. After the abatement system was put in, Brian Patty came by and did a retest. And I was talking to him and he was just a huge wealth of knowledge. So I thought it was fitting for me to interview him and so he could educate all of us on radon and the effects of radon. So here it is. Brian, how you doing, buddy? Oh, just fine, just fine. Good, so this is Brian Patty with All Pro Services. Why don't you give everybody a little background of who you are, what you do? All right, well, All Pro Services is a home inspection environmental testing firm. We do an array of different services, such as home inspections, radon testing, mold testing, and then we also test for radon in other substances like granite countertops and in water. We also do electromagnetic and field testing, and we also do asbestos and lead-based paint. Awesome. And, granite. And we've been serving for... Yeah, <laughs> and we've been serving these areas since 1993, and it's more than a business to us. We really do view it, view it more as a calling to help keep people safe and ensure that they make a good decision when they purchase a home. Awesome. My first question for you is, what is radon? Where does it come from? Radon is a naturally occurring radioactive gas. We care about it because it is a decay product of a substance everyone knows called uranium. But as it decays in the ground, it creates radon as a gas and it's pushed from underground up to the house. When it comes up, the house has a lid, which allows it to build and concentrate in one spot. And as it concentrates, it can become dangerous in high levels. That's okay. So what are the health risks of radon? How does it affect people? Radon only has one health effect and that is the it is the leading cause of lung cancer in the United States and non-smokers the only thing that beats it overall is smoking and the gap between them is not as big as it used to be because we don't smoke like we used to as a country but radon is a constant threat all homes have it what we have to determine is how much is there and what remedy we can do to defeat it okay and so so I'm, there's a there's an EPA standard um, mm -hmm. that if you could go into a little bit about the EPA standard what is that limit and what exactly does that mean? Um, the big thing with the EPA limit of 4.0 picocuries per liter of air, I don't need to go into that particular That's demonic, pretty, yeah. uh, I don't think anybody there. knows what that is, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But the big thing is the 4.0 mark is not a marker of safety. That's just the feasibility point where the federal government said this or higher and you fix it. It must at the very least go lower than four. That's what the 4.0 means, but it's not a safety marker. A study by the University of Kentucky concluded that the 4.0 marker is actually eight cigarettes a day to your lung tissue. So you want as little of this stuff in the house as you can. That's amazing. Eight cigarettes, that's like smoking eight cigarettes a day. So yes. my, my, uh, my reading came back at 5.5. So I'm assuming that's like 10, 11 cigarettes a day I was smoking for a little while there. Uh, luckily, you, luckily, not not quite. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe between eight and nine. Yeah. But the big thing with radon is how quickly it can change. That's the big thing with it. So just because you had a high testing when you were selling your home, doesn't mean that it's been high the whole time at all. Which is why the EPA recommends testing every two years to keep an eye on it. I got you. So in testing, you've been doing this a while, I assume. What is the highest test that you've ever seen? And if you could kind of give us an idea of, you know, what that number means to you or what it would mean to us. Well, here's the, here's the big thing. What radon, again, is, is a radiation. So the more of it you have, the worse the outcome can potentially be. 
4.0, again, is eight cigarettes a day. 8.0 is about 16, 10 is a full pack. The highest I've had on my equipment in Northern Virginia was a level of 212. That's amazing, 212. 212. So that's like you're radioactive. I mean. That's if you spend several days in a row in your basement and walk outside, you will start to get picked up by a Geiger counter if you spend enough time down there. That's amazing. Um, I, I think you were telling me a story about a guy that actually was working on a radio, act, like a reactor or something. And can you tell us about that? Yes. So quick backstory on radon. We, uh, radon was identified in 1902 as a, as a substance. We knew that miners were getting exposed to it as they dug for minerals underground. I'm talking about underground miners, not miners as in under 18. But in 1984, we got a big shock. And that's when we discovered that radon moved and actually went into houses. We didn't know that. And that was found by a gentleman named Stanley Watrous completely by accident. He was working on the Limerick power plant, if I recall correctly. And he was a construction foreman there. And he bought a house in the town of Limerick where it was over the weekend, got the house ready, went to work on Monday. When he left, the decimeter badge set off alarms. They tested his house and his house came back at 3,000. He moved out, oh. they used this as a lab to figure out how to defeat it. And he lives in that house to this day because they were successfully able to bring the radon levels down. Never let radon scare you out of your house. It is very easy to defeat. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. You know, a lot of buyers, when they, when they find that there's a higher level of radon, they'll get scared. So they shouldn't be scared mm -hmm. at this point. Why is that? I guess the abatement systems will pretty much take care of the high readings for the most part? Oh yes, oh yes, absolutely. In the 25 years we've been testing homes in Northern Virginia, we have tested 50,000 houses. 18,000 of them have tested as high. We do have a high rate in Northern Virginia of one house in three. Nationally, the average is one in 15. But those 18,000 homes, I've had a grand total of six fail the clearance test after installation. Wow. Four of them, the problems were mechanical. Three of them were bad motors on the fan. And like any part, you'll have one or two that whoops on the assembly line. One was a new technician who installed the system and he accidentally installed the motor in it backwards. For future reference, smoke should not come out of your mitigation system. That's hilarious. The problem with the fifth one was actually size. The problem with the fifth one was size. It was 27,000 square feet. And one system doesn't have the muscle for building of that size. That's like asking it to do a school. So yeah. he needed multiple. And then the last one, sat on hyper compacted Virginia red clay, which is by itself, if you've ever played in a garden in Northern Virginia and gone down deep enough, you've played with the clay. It's very heavy and it's very dense. So when you hyper compact it, nothing will go through it, not air or water. So they had to put in a tandem system on the opposite side to ensure enough air got pulled out from beneath the house. Got it. So Explain to people, I guess, what the testing system is like for when you come into a house and you put in a test. What, what is that like? Well, I'm in the house really for a grand total of about five minutes or less. Okay. The test kit that we use is called an EPERM Electret, which uses a small wafer disc about the size of a silver dollar. It has a preset electrical charge on it that we measure in volts. A brand new one registers at about 750. Every time a particle hits the disc, the charge depletes a little bit. And how far it goes down over two or three days is what tells us how much radon is there. The test goes into the basement or the lowest living or livable area and then stays there for at least 48 hours. After which we pick up the test, bring it back to our office and take it apart and see what the new voltage levels are, which give us the average radon result. But you do get radon results the same day. That's important. This is not an animal you want to wait on. Exactly. And so, once there's higher levels of radon found, um, what types of mitigation systems are there to get rid of this gas? The EPA has approved of two designs, which is what we see in Northern Virginia. It's when you see that big bulbous plastic case on the side of a house at the bottom of what looks like a downspout. And what it's doing is pulling air from beneath the house, what we see here. The other one's called a pressurization system, and basically it's that whole mechanism in reverse. The fan is flipped upside down. Outside air is brought in and it blows into the foundation, just like if you were blowing bubbles in your milk. 
The problem is in Northern Virginia, again, we come back to the red clay. It's very heavy and dense. So the pressurization systems don't work here. Those are more prevalently to be found in the American Southwest where it's much more arid, dry ground than what we have here on the Eastern Seaboard. Okay, and so after that is installed, how long is that installation process? Do you, do you have any idea? Normally, in, in my experience from the companies that I'm most familiar with, because again, we don't do it installations or maintenance on these yeah. systems, usually it takes between two and five hours. It's not a multi day ordeal. Okay, that's good. And so, after that, that's installed, then what happens? You guys come back and do a retest? It is strongly recommended you have a professional retest. Many companies will have a small little home kit that they give you, it's okay. like a 15 or 20 dollar kit you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's but they tend to have problems, uh, one of which is chain of custody. You have to mail it away and you don't know what it comes into contact with. Whereas if you choose a professional, the test goes from your house to their car to their office. So we strongly recommend doing a professional test. So radon is deceiving, right? My basement, I always thought that, you know, if you're an in-ground basement, you should probably test for it. But if you've got exposure like my basement is, it's basically a walkout basement. Um, so I was under the impression that ah, you're probably not going to have uh, have the radon in that situation. But according to what you were saying before, there's definitely possibilities no matter what. So can you explain that a little bit? The big thing about radon is that it does not care what the design of the home is. It's coming from the ground up and it will penetrate foundation with no problem. So the EPA recommends up to the second floor in condos be tested. And even though many will think the second floor condo, even if you're on a slab that you don't need to test, I have had a third floor condo come up high in Northern Virginia. Wow. So up to the second floor at the very least, it is strongly recommended that you test professionally for radon gas. And is there a change, like have you seen a rate of change like from, from the ground, the basement floor to the next level? You know, how, how varying is that rate? From one floor to the Fortunately, in my experience, and I've done a number of personal experiments to this, uh, this particular nature, the bottom level or basement, or if you don't have a basement, your first floor is where the level is going to be highest because that's where it's getting in. But after that, it really does not, not like to try to go up through a building. So in my experience, through experiments I've done in my own home and information I've gotten in the homes of clients who have requested I test the basement and their top floor. We've come to the conclusion that radon will actually drop 40%, almost half, per level of home. So the higher you go, the lower it will get. Bedrooms upstairs on a top floor, for example, of a three-story home, will always have the lowest levels. And if you get the basement of your home nice and low, you have virtually erased it from the rest of the house. Wow, that's amazing. All right, so, so final question. Do the radon rates change Seasonally, are they, is there a map that people can look at? Um, can you go into a little bit about what areas of the country maybe are of higher levels of, of radon and, and how that changes per year? Well, the answer to both of those questions is yes. Radon will change seasonally, which is why the real golden standard, if you're not doing a real estate transaction, is to actually do a long-term test, which is 91 days up to a year. But in that kind of situation for the 40 hour, 48 hour test, you have to keep all the windows in the house closed. For the long term test, it doesn't matter. If you open every window, you open every window. So it can change seasonally, which is why the long term test is used. So I can get as much information over that time frame as it can. In terms of what your region tends to be, all 50 states make radon maps of themselves that label the counties as either low risk, intermediate, or high. But even if you're in a low risk county, that doesn't mean that there's none, just not as many come up as high. So it's still a good idea to test every two years to keep an eye on it. A great example of this is actually the state of Georgia, where if you look up a Georgia radon map, the entirety of the map is labeled low risk. All the counties are yellow until you hit the four counties that surround the city of Atlanta, hmm. because the amount of rock there is needed in order to support the weight of those tall buildings of the city. In Virginia, the eastern portion of the state, the Tidewater area, is low risk. Once you get in a little bit from that, it turns to intermediate risk. And then the first course of mountains for the Blue Ridge is high risk. The Shenandoah Valley floor is intermediate, and the other side of the valley is also high risk. So it depends on what the geology of the state really is, but all 50 states have them. And if you're curious, I do strongly recommend that you look up on a map 
and just Google Iowa State Radon Map, New Hampshire, and go ahead and see your curiosity and see what it is. That's cool. Cool. So, so I want to get back to one other thing. You mentioned granite counters in your introduction. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that? I mean, that's, that's crazy to me. If you have a granite countertop, granite is kind of a generic term that's used to describe a stone countertop that you find in your kitchen. But if it's raw, came out of the ground, that we cut it into a sliver and stuck it on your, in your kitchen granite, then that can have radioactive material in it. So when we're called out to a house like that, what we typically do is use a small handheld Geiger counter about the size of my hand. And we just scan along the surface to see if anything lights up. Now I've done over 500 countertops in Northern Virginia, and I've only ever had one light up. And it was a piece of countertop that had literally just come into the showroom. It wasn't even in somebody's house. They took me to the store to test yeah. it first. And it lit up in a way that I said, you should not, you really shouldn't buy this particular piece because it's very active. So once in a while you'll have that, but if it's man-made stone, a man-made quartz, for example, yeah. once in a while you might have something, a little bit of a blend, but nothing of the kind of magnitude you'll have from raw, pure granite. That's amazing, amazing. Well, there's another thing on that. What's that? Go ahead. Another part of that is that, you know, for granite countertops, the lighter the color, the more likely it is to have something live in it. Really? Mm hmm. Intriguing. So if you have a white countertop, definitely have it tested. You lose nothing by at least having the knowledge. And like, what, what would that reading come up to uh, if it was high? I mean, it's above four or something like that? On that, that one, like, on that one, really just depends on what the Geiger counter states as high. It actually says on the face. Yeah. Um, when you That's a different do way that, talking. yeah, when you do it, just like you see in the movies, you know, if you go over a radioactive substance, you'll get that chattering uh, from mm -hmm. the machine as it goes. It does the same thing. It'll chatter the higher the needle goes, and the higher the needle goes, the louder it gets. So that's how one of the ways you know, I maybe not should have, want to have this in my house. Yeah, that's for sure. That's crazy, very interesting. Really appreciate it. Guys, Brian Patty from All Pro Services, that's all about radon. If you have any questions, we'll leave his information in the comments below. And uh, yeah, Brian, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to do this interview. No problem at all, happy to help in any way that I can. All right, you take care. Thanks, you too. Thanks.